All right, hi, Sociology of Aging class. This is Dr. Pitt. Um, I am going to use uh, Zoom to record a lot of sessions uh, that I will upload to YouTube because with Zoom, I have the ability to share my screen and because I'm going to be going over the syllabus here with you uh, and in other um, videos, I'll be going over the PowerPoints. This is the platform that I will be using to do that. I have to kind of adventure out maybe a little bit from Zoom at some point in time to figure out other uh, programs that allow me to share my screen because Blackboard used to, but I'm not on Blackboard anymore. All right, so with that being said, I don't think that there's any sharing screen in Canvas's video feature, but anyway, it doesn't matter. This is how I'm doing it right now. All right, well, welcome to 242. I am your instructor, Dr. Pitt, and this is going to be a course that is offered asynchronously, meaning there is no set meeting time for this course. That means that from Monday at midnight until Sunday at 11.59, you have that entire time to complete the, that week's module. The uh, module comes open, as I said, Monday at midnight, and then you will have all of that time. Just make sure that you're, uh, make, that you're paying attention to your time, that you're not waiting until the last minute to get to that assignment, because sometimes I know that we have some late workers, but we have some early workers as well in our classes. Both of these sections are uh, run the same. So if I am saying both sections, just know that it's just, that's just how it is. Um, both of them run at the same exact pace and the same exact syllabus. Uh, so if I say both sections, don't worry, I'm not referring to one or the, over the other. Um, so yeah, the, uh, syllabus is located on the landing page of the course of Canvas, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so you can take a look at that syllabus as well along with me. All right, so let's get rid of this little puppy here, minimize that. And as you know, um, in Canvas, we have all of these lovely little buttons and all of that that we have to get to and get through. Don't pay attention to my, my landing page here because it's um, not uh, fully published here. So um, as I am recording this, I have not published your course yet, but you will have it, you will have it um, published here uh, by the time that you are getting around to watching this. So when you go into your course, this is where you land. For those of you who have been on Canvas before, this should be old hat to you. For those of you who have not been on Canvas before, this is the what I call the landing page or the home page. Um, different or professors have may have different setups. Some professors have their Canvas courses all prettified and pictures all over the place. I haven't gotten there yet. At some point I will, but not yet. Just kind of keeping my head above water right now with all of the changes with COVID and everything. So um, this is your syllabus. I'm in the first section here. So just like I said before, both sections run the same, um, but I just chose N1 as my section. All right, so looking at our syllabus here, we know that we're going into fall 2020, and we know that this is Sociology of Aging. It is a three semester uh, hour course. We have it online. You can read through the course description. This is my contact information. Uh, I am over on Folk Avenue, which is down from the clinic. Um, down from Cosiano, and um, I am in the, it's called Office B, but I am on the first floor. So if you come see me, you will come into the house. You will walk straight through the, um, the hallway. It's a very short hallway. You'll still see the end of it. You'll see the bathroom. You take a left, and then you'll see the United office in front of you, and then my office is right to the left, right to the left. It's to the left, okay. Uh, and if I'm not there, my door will be closed. You can leave me a message on my dry erase board. If I'm there, then my office door is open, okay? All right, so office hours, I am going to be announcing those. I'll be posting those. Um, I haven't uh, solidified those yet because I need to figure out what are going to be my best days to have office hours. These are the course objectives for the, uh, for the course. Down here we have C3 is our core plus 
course number. This is our textbook, the um, Cadagno. I never can say her name, Quadagno. Um, say her name correctly, but it's the 2018 version. It's the seventh edition. I've had students ask me, can they use the sixth edition? Um, I have not seen a tremendous difference, but there may be small additions in the seventh edition. And um, on some of the questions, you may not have that section. So my high suggestion is, is to get the seventh edition. Uh, just rent it, okay, unless you wanna, unless you wanna keep it. Um, I will put a copy on reserve at the library. I think that we're still able to do that. Now that I say that with COVID, I'm not, well, we can't get rid of books. Let me double check on that and I will send out an announcement on that. Okay. The um, instructional strategies and the methods of assessment that I use for this course. So the methods of assessment, there are modules and um, those modules can be seen if you go back to this section, I'm going to go to student view. Um, at this point in time, I don't think I have any mod. Yes, I do. I have a module. So when you go in, you're going to just go straight into this little section here, modules. Now everything's grayed out right now because it's not open yet. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll leave the student view and you'll get to see what I'm talking about from my end. Okay. So every module is going to have housed in it your stuff for the week, okay? And here you'll see, this is the actual uh, module for week one. You have a discussion board, a journal entry, which is a video assignment, and then you have a quiz. I have posted chapter one as a PDF that I made copies of, so it's not the most professional looking copy. Uh, you may see my fingers in a couple of the shots, but um, I know that at the beginning of the semester, people are still kind of getting acclimated and um, haven't purchased books yet. I think I also have chapter, yes. So I have chapters one and two loaded as a PDF, but those are the only two chapters that I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any more after that because then, you know, it becomes an issue of why should you buy the book? Okay. Um, so chapter one is located here, and then I will have a... Um, the video presentation or and the PowerPoint as well. So chapter one PowerPoint will be located here and the video presentation will be located here as well. So everything I mark clearly, okay? You can also get to your uh, assignments this way if you go to the discussion board, but my biggest suggestion is, is instead of just trying to guess where to find all of these things, just go right straight to that module, all right? So then the discussion board, <coughs> excuse me, go back to my syllabus here, you will have a, a post that you are responsible for writing. You will not see anything but the prompt. So when you get into the discussion board, you're only going to see the prompt, you're going to respond to it. And then once you hit post reply, then you will see if there are other replies or other responses, you'll see them. The purpose of that is, is to make sure that you are answering your question accordingly, that you're not going and saying, oh, hey, I liked that, and then you change your answer. So this is for you to respond to the, to the, the prompt. You are then to read through other colleagues, other classmates, posts, and then reply to two other classmates. The uh, discussion board post is worth 10 points. Each one of them is worth 10 points. You get three points for responding to two classmates. You get two points for responding to one and you get zero points for responding to nobody, okay? So be sure that you're responding. Now I know that, as I said before, that there are early workers and late workers. And I know that there are gonna be people who are gonna be like, okay, I got my discussion board done and it was Tuesday, but when I was in there, there was only one other person. Don't forget to go back and respond. If you want to leave your responses until say Friday, you know, that could be something that you could work out as a schedule. Um, you could post, if you know you're gonna post on Monday, post your response on Monday, come back on Friday, read through the responses and then do your two replies. Just know that there are going to be people who are going to wait to get their assignments done. Um, for those of you who are waiting to get your assignments done, you obviously will have a wealth of individuals to choose from, but also understand that you are not giving your classmates that opportunity to read what you have to say. So um, 
I'm not saying everybody has to get all their stuff done on Monday. That's not the purpose of an asynchronous class, but just keep that in mind, okay? Um, also, on that note, if you're waiting until, well, I'll wait until I get down to the, um, to the other part. Okay, the discussion board, so that's that part, all right? Then we have a journal entry. Your journal entry is either going to be a video assignment, you're gonna watch a video and respond to the prompts. The first video assignment, there are five questions. Okay, so make sure that you respond to all five of those questions. The um, assignment has a rubric attached to it. It's a very basic rubric. It just says response number one, response number two. But you can look at that rubric and say, okay, yeah, that's right. I have five things that I have to respond to. Or you can write them down and respond to them or just keep it open while you're writing your response. So um, that's the first journal. Other journals may just be a, a, a prompt just more of a getting you to have a free flow conversation on um, that prompt. Or it could be a, what did you find most interesting in chapter one or chapter three or whatever? Um, and then tell me why you chose that. Or tell me something that you learned from chapter three that you didn't know about. And why did you think it was important? Or tell me something from chapter seven that you think is important for other people to know about the older adult population, okay? Um, so that's the journal entry. And then there will be quizzes. It'll just be short and sweet quizzes. They'll just quiz you over the material for that week. And um, that's, there's no other explanation other than it's a quiz. There is a midterm in this class. <clears throat> it will be the week of October 5th which is that week eight module or module eight. So you'll have from October 5th until October 12th to get that done. It will be an open and go, it'll be an open and close um, test. You can go in, open it up, and then once you click submit, then it's in. But you can have all week to work on it. So you can go in, work on it for a little bit, come back out. Go back in, work on it a little bit, come back out go back in, work on a little bit, come back out. That's the beauty of Canvas and having an open-ended uh, midterm. You are able to do that. You don't have to take it all in one setting. Um, now that does, or all in one sitting, not setting, sitting. That doesn't mean that all tests are like that with professors. You know, you do have some professors who have strict time guidelines on their tests and you must adhere to those. But for this midterm, it is opens on Monday at midnight and then closes on Sunday at 11.59. Okay. Then you have a final project, which is noted up here in your core plus. We have to assess you somehow, um, or I have to assess you somehow against this. And the best way to do that is for a movie review assignment. So down here, there's no final exam in the course. The movie review is due December 7th, which is that Monday of finals week. It's due by 11.59. The um, place to turn in will be on Canvas and on TaskStream, okay? So I know that I've got it. The um, requirements will be released after the midterm. So then you'll have that assignment available to you as far as what is required of you. But for the most part, I have the parameters set forth here. So you'll need to um, identify a movie and I provide to you a long list of, of potentials. I do not expect you to go out and buy some $70 movie. That is not what I want you to do. I, if it's on Netflix, watch it on Netflix. However, there are going to be parameters. And the parameters are, I'm going to say that there are specific movies that are completely off the board, okay? Can't do it. You're going to come to me after the midterm and say, I'm thinking of watching this movie or I've already watched this movie and I wanna watch it again for this assignment. You're going to come to me and tell me what that movie is. I will tell you what movies I don't want you choosing. And I will be compiling that list probably about the fourth week of class. So you can at least have that heads up. Not, so I'm gonna get down to it and say, oh no, no, you can't, you can't do that movie. I'll tell you three right off the bat. Three of them right off the bat. Up, do not, do not submit a paper on up. Done with up, okay. Do not submit a paper on the notebook. Do not choose the bucket list, okay. 
those three things, those three movies are an absolute no at this point. Okay. I will have, I'm going to go through the list and look at, I think that those are pretty much Gran Torino. I will allow because Gran Torino deals with a lot of isms in there, a lot of social um, situations. And I mean, there's racism, um, there's ageism, there's a lot of stuff. So Gran Torino is a good choice. Uh, so I will allow for that. It's one that I do know that a lot of people watch and a lot of people will review. Um, but I will allow that one. Another one is um, The Intern with Robert De Niro. Um, I've had students watch that recent, fairly recently, and I have read many um, papers about that. Um, but it doesn't mean it's not a good movie to have as, as, an, um, as a movie to review. The reason I say I don't want to see Up, Up, um, while it is a cute movie, um, and while it does deal with uh, aging issues, it is overdone, um, and it is not really all that practical, if we think about it, right? Not many older adults live in a house that they can put balloons on and float off to some faraway place, okay? Um, so it, it, it's cute and it introduces children to the concept of aging and, um, it opens up conversations, but no. Okay. The notebook. I just don't want to read about it. <laughs> it's terrible. There's, there are a lot of, of pieces in the notebook that are just, you know, they flip and flop and go back and forth. Um, yeah. So not the notebook. And the bucket list. The bucket list, if you took the bucket list and put two younger actors or actresses in there, it still would work, okay? Just because Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson are at the end of their lives in this movie does not mean that it is about aging. It is about cancer and it is about terminal illness, but not all older adults suffer from terminal illness. Okay, so that's one of the reasons I'm pulling that one off the plate. Okay, um, so yeah, one just popped into my mind that I thought would be is is also another good one, and now I can't. Oh, still Alice, uh, still Alice. Even though it's about early onset adult or early onset Alzheimer's, it still is about a disease that older adults could possibly uh, have. So um, I will allow still Alice as well. I'll tell you, I'll write it all down. I'll say, these are the ones I don't want to see. And here's a list of, of movies that you can choose from, okay? So with that being said, the final project is, is you're going to write a four to six page paper on this movie. I don't want you reviewing this movie and saying, I think this is the best movie ever, blah, 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 blah. And then you give me four pages of summary synopsis intertwine your synopsis with these with these um three points okay you're identifying relevant gerontology concepts you're then substantially relating those concepts presented in the movie to course content and then you're also evaluating whether those identified concepts are accurately portrayed in the movie based on the information that you learned okay so for example, if we were looking at the bucket list and if we were talking about um, individual, and I know I said we're not doing going to, but I'll use that as an example because we're not going to be watching that movie. The bucket list, as I said, is a movie about terminal illness, cancer. It also deals with needing to check off the bucket list, right? Well, anybody who has a terminal illness could have a bucket list. So right there, if we take that piece out of it and try to apply it, we can apply it to different age groups, right? Um, also, the big issue with, the, with that movie is, is that one individual has a tremendous amount of means to him, Jack Nicholson's character. He is in a higher level of socioeconomic status and is able to fulfill that bucket list 
I mean, who is going to go to India and see the Taj Mahal or jump out of an airplane or um, try to, you know, try to, to scale Mount Everest, you know, whatever, or it sends its ashes up to Mount Everest. That's, those are kind of unrealistic um, applications. So that would be something that you could talk about in a paper if you were writing a paper about the bucket list. So it's those types of things that you just need to start thinking about. And I would highly encourage you that um, you look at this um, because I'm spending a lot of time talking about it. Start thinking of some movies that you know that there are older adults in them and that they're a, a good central character. Um, grumpy old men, grumpier old men, uh, that's a good um, older aged movie about two dudes who don't get along with one another and you know both fall in love with the same woman in the first movie um and then also dealing with his older father uh who lives with them oh, does he live with them oh anyway whatever um so think of those you know think of those movies that you could start working on and then when you're going through your material kind of jot down some ideas on that material so it's not so overwhelming at the end that you're not sitting there going oh great now i've got to go through an entire semester of stuff and try to understand this okay all right i have spent enough time talking about this final project uh there will be more information on all of it um coming up and just those pieces that i told you about okay so that's the artifact that's used for the core plus assessment that it's turned in on task stream and also on canvas this is just a breakdown of your point system and um we you may see in some of your on or some of your in-class classes a covid statement that um should we have to pull everything online then we have the right to do so i'm not putting that in this uh in the syllabus so you may see it on some of your your face-to-face -face classes but you're not going to see it in here because we're already asynchronous and we don't need to have that conversation okay uh so grading time and my response time this goes hand in hand with the early workers and the late workers and some things that can happen with computers and that is technical issues or technical difficulties every once in a while i will be the one who causes those issues or those difficulties because i have not posted something correctly or i haven't opened something up that was supposed to be opened up at a, sp a specific time um i'm human and i am a big picture kind of person it's those minute details that uh sometimes kind of smack my little hand so when you have an assignment that is due and you are waiting until Sunday to do the assignment, if you have a question about that assignment, I am not going to answer it. I have a very strict Monday through Friday communication. If you are going to talk to me after 5 p.m. on Friday, don't assume you're going to get an answer. I may answer you. I'm, if, it's, if it's a, oh my gosh, I just, my computer just blew up kind of thing i will respond to that but if it's a hey i don't i'm not quite understanding what you're asking here i'm not answering that question take a look at the work before you get to friday to make sure you understand what you're supposed to do and then ask your questions during the work week okay the um the issue that i run into is, is that i need to have you know i need to have a good delineation of work life and home life. And when it's an asynchronous course, um, that kind of blends together. And so I just need to make sure that for me, I am setting those parameters, okay? So after 5 p.m., any questions, I will not answer unless I, unless it's a, you know, dire situation, I won't answer until after Monday or after 9 a.m. on Monday. Um, and so just know that, okay? So, um, that applies to, and I know I say so a lot, so I'm sorry. Uh, that applies to deadlines and questions and all of that. All right. Grading, I try to grade as quickly as I possibly can. Sometimes I will fall behind depending on uh, what's going on in my other classes, but I do grade uh, as quickly as I can. If you have not gotten an assignment in, I will see on my end a dash in Canvas. And if I see a dash, that means you have not turned anything in. I will be putting in a zero in there if you have not gotten it to me by the time I get to grading it. If you think, oh my gosh, no, I submitted that or I swore that went in or whatever, get in contact with me as soon as possible. 
So if module four's discussion board had a dash and I put a zero in and you swore you did it and you come to me and you say, I am so sorry, I thought that I got that done. I will allow you that opportunity, but don't come to me at module eight and say that to me, okay? As soon as you see that grade go in, or if you see a comment, I make comments on my grading. Read my comments or else I feel like I'm talking to nobody. So if I make a comment and I say, hey, you know, you didn't, I, and th this, is, this is a pattern that I see with some, um, in some situations, they don't respond to another student's um, discussion board. So they just keep respond, keep doing their own discussion board, but automatically getting three points off because they're not giving their response to two other students. And I'll have that week after week after week after week after week. And I will say in there, you need to respond to at least two other students or two, two other students' response or replies. And yet I won't ever hear anything from the student. So make sure you read my, my comments when I, um, when I offer them, okay? So late work. Um, it is expected that um, you get it done on the deadline, but if you do not, you need to let me know as soon as possible. Late work will be accepted one week after that module closes, but only one week, okay? And only in those circumstances that are beyond your control or beyond my control, okay? So um, anything turned in after that extension, it, it won't be accepted, okay? Um, and then you can read through here and see what we have in front of us as far as our modules are concerned. So there's that module eight. Oh, I'm sorry, October 5th through the 11th, not the 12th. I said the 12th because then the next module opens up. Okay. Um, and then it's just straight through pretty much through the chapters. Every once in a while, there will be um, a reading that I might post in um, with the chapter because I want to you to um, also have that piece of information in front of you as you complete your assignments. So just always pay attention to what you see in the module. Always go to that module. That's where you need to go. Okay. All right. I think that that is it uh, as far as the syllabus is concerned. So I'll get off of here. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So since this is asynchronous, we are just meeting online. And if you have any questions, please do not uh, hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I will be posting my office hours if you would like to come in and speak with me face to face. Of course, if you come in and speak with me face to face, you need to wear a mask, you need to socially distance, okay? All right, I think that's all. So let me go ahead. I will stop sharing this and I will get ready to upload this to YouTube and get it posted. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Thanks.